Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, we have an awesome unboxing for you guys today in a mini configuration on the Cisco SF348PP PoE managed switch. I'm super excited to get this guy in the lab. Uh, I actually have two of them. I already configured the first one, and uh, and the reason why we got this is because at my nine to five job, we are finally upgrading to VoIP phones. And one of the requirements is to have uh, PoE switches, power over Ethernet. Uh, rather than getting the power brick, you want to power everything off one cable. So that's awesome, right? So let's get to it. Let me get my trusty knife. Open this guy up. And we're going to open it up real quick. Goes right here to the side. Uh, oh, here we go. That's it. It's just... Guy up. Boom. Great. All right, so what comes inside the box? We have uh, a bunch of manuals. We have a CD. Right here, we have our Read Me First CD. This is basically the administration manual. You have the Start Quick Guide right here in different languages. First couple of pages is English. This is the one that actually tells you the IP address that's assigned automatically to the switch. I believe by default a lot of the switch IP addresses is 192.168.1254. And just got to make sure that when you get a laptop, which we are going to do, uh, that laptop has to be in the same subnet. So when you plug in, you're able to log into the Cisco web interface and then configure it. And last but not least, we have our technical support contact little paper right here. We have our serial uh, connection. If you want to go old school and do a terminal, Telenet. We have a power cable. Now, I got this Cisco SF300 from Amazon. And it looks like the buyer gave me like European, uh, the European uh, cable. See? That's no good. But they did hook me up inside the box. They gave me the standard USA cable, which is this guy right here. Uh, I don't know. This feels kind of like not legit because look at the difference between this guy. This guy is really heavy gauge cable versus this guy it looks like, you know, like a monitor cable. But it still works. And last but not least, we have the beautiful brackets. The brackets is a must. We are going to hook this guy up with brackets. And then we got the screws and we have the little, these are the screws right here to hook it up to your rack in your lamb room. And the little baby screws are to hook up your bracket on the side. You got two brackets. So we're going to actually do that right now. Pretty soon, I mean. And then we have our little stickers, which uh, you can put it at the bottom of the switch. we put this to the side. This to the side. Oh, that's to the side. And then we have the beautiful switch. Look at this. Awesome. Put the box to the side. Beautiful. Let's take this plastic out of here. Again, like I said, we got two of these, 4848. I think it gives us enough ports. Uh, the first switch, I already configured it with a 101010-10 uh, 10, 10, 10, uh, subnet. This one, again, I'm going to assign it to an IP address on the 101010.10.10.24 10, 10, 10, 10. Uh, subnet. So uh, that's what the IP address range that I'm going to be providing to my VoIPs. Uh, phones when they come in uh, so far our major carrier is Mitel we heard a lot of good things about them I like the plug-in that they have which is integrated to Office 365 and Outlook and uh, I think the next thing that we need to do is migrate our DID numbers to Mitel so that's it's it's gonna be a while but I need to get these guys up and running make sure uh, from my understanding I think you have to configure your PoE switches to QRS, which is quality over services. All right, so uh, I'm going to take the small little screws and we're going to hook up these brackets. One bracket goes this way and the other bracket goes on the other side as well. Going to get my nice little, you know, tool right here. The Phillips screwdriver. Close that up. Cool. And we're going to get all our little screws, and we're going to mount it. Now the big screws are for the lamb room to hook it up to your rack, 
inside your lamb room. I'm not going to use those right now. Put those to the side. And we're going to screw in first bracket on the side. All right, awesome. So uh, we got both brackets hooked up on the left and the right. And uh, these are all the ports right here, 48 ports. Again, the speed is on uh, 1 through 48, right? 1 through 48, you got uh, 10 by 100, 10 100 speed. And then the last two ports right here, a gigabit. And then you also have SFP ports as well. Cool. In the back side, you know, got a lot on the back side. You have your power cord. This is where I'm going to insert our power cord, our, our U.S. standard power cord. Again, when I purchased it on Amazon, it gave me a European, uh, you know, cable. We don't want that. Got to have the uh, USA one. And then on the other side right here, we have our console port. They did provide us the serial port. You are able to hook it up. Get a laptop that has a serial port as well, and then you could do a telenet and uh, do the command, configure it that way. I like to use the web interface because it's much easier, but we are gonna power it on, get a laptop, and then uh, configure it. All right, guys, so I have my XPS 13 uh, laptop already booted up. I have a Type-C to Ethernet adapter with a Ethernet cable because we need to plug it in. We have our power cable, which I'm actually gonna plug it in with you guys right now. Ah, plug it right here so if you got the if you got the cisco sf 300 facing you with the ports right uh power port is actually at on the left hand side right <laughs> and then i have a heavy gauge um orange cable which i'm going to plug it in as soon as you plug it in it's going to boot up anyway so you're going to hear that oh the lights are going to light up it's already booting up system uh led is blinking on the left hand side and then you have the fan which is green that's always a good thing awesome now the next thing that we need to do is actually configure our laptop a little bit uh, because if you plug in this guy automatically to the switch you're not going to get an IP address you need to uh, configure your Ethernet port to be on the same subnet as the Cisco switch which is uh, 192.168.1.254 so I'm actually gonna give the laptop 253. All right, so let's configure the laptop. We're gonna click on notification center right here, all settings. We're gonna click on network and internet. Click on ethernet. Uh, we're gonna change adaptive options. And we're gonna locate our uh, ethernet adapter, which is this guy right here. We're gonna right click on it, go to properties. Now it's not plugged in yet, but we're gonna double click on the TCP IPv4. And the following IP address is going to be 192, 168, 168, 1253. Okay, the switch is 254, and we're going to hit tab. Uh, subnet is going to be 255, 255, 255, 0. You do not need to give it a gateway. We're going to click on OK, OK, and uh, let's minimize this real quick because we're going to be needing that. We're going to take our cable right here and you can plug it into any port doesn't really matter I'm gonna plug it into number 24 awesome it's already lighting up it's a good thing uh, on your desktop you should see like a nice little exclamation point indicating no internet access it's okay all right so now we need to open up a browser uh, I am going to open it doesn't really matter what browser you open up I can even do it here HTTP uh, 192, 168, 1254. Hit enter. Awesome. It's going to automatically launch up. You know, you can actually type in a web address within your Windows Explorer, right? Uh, by default, the username and password is Cisco Cisco, but we need to change that. So uh, let's click inside username Cisco Cisco login. As soon as you log in, it's going to want you to reset the password never save your passwords it's not a good thing and we're going to give it the old password which is cisco all lowercase and then you're going to provide a new password okay so i'm actually going to fast forward the video so you guys don't see it so do not worry now once you log in and you change the password on the upper right side you're going to see save it's going to constantly blink 
uh, we need to save those changes within the config file on the switch so click on save and just click apply and then click OK now next thing that we need to do is change the IP address because I do not want to use a 192.168.1254 uh, I already created a subnet just for the VoIP phones and so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to change it real quick. Uh, super simple. You can actually click on Get Started and one of the options right here is Change Device IP Address. How, how easy is that? Click on it and it's going to be a static. By default the IP address is 192.168.1254. I'm going to change it to the following. Awesome. Okay, because the first switch that I got was uh, 253 this one is going to be 254 and then we are going to apply it okay now once you apply it and okay you're gonna get this don't freak out the reason why you're getting this is because you're not on the same network as the 10 10 10 or whatever IP address you gave it so this is the reason why I did not close up the network connection because I need to get into my network adapter right click on it go to properties and I need to be part of that 10 subnet. So double click on TCP IPv4 and change that IP address to something uh, easy. Okay, so this one was 254. Uh, I'm gonna leave it as 253. So when I click OK, OK, and I'm gonna minimize this real quick. And it should reload automatically. If it doesn't, just click on reload looks like it's doing something and there we go and then you're able to log in and the password is not Cisco anymore remember we changed it so whatever password you provide it give it and then once you log in again don't save your password don't need to and that's it now once you log into the Cisco web interface again you made a change so we need to save it uh, the save little thing is gonna blink so click on it and it's going to take you here to copy and save the configuration on the switch and click apply click ok it's going to do its thing and it's going done awesome and that's it guys for my unboxing slash mini configuration on cisco's uh, sf 348 pp poe managed switch i have to get with the mitel it guys and the engineer because there's a couple of things that i need to do on the poe switch and one of the things that i i I kind of remember when we had that meeting is we need to configure uh, QoS, uh, quality over services. So I need to know what they need me to do on the switch for the VoIP phones to work correctly. Overall, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.